There's another one up there going. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Oh yeah, I hear it. It's like a woodpecker. Like, ta -ta -ta -ta. Well, a forest ecosystem is, is inherently very, very complex. There are an awful lot of organisms in there, from the big things that are very obvious, like the trees and the animals, to the smaller things that are much less obvious, the, the fungi and the smaller insects, and the wood-boring insects that we don't really see much of on the outside. So it's a very complex space indeed. An organism which might act as a food source for one organism, might act as a shelter for another, or even be a predator for another organism. The sheer level of detail was something incredible. What we're trying to do with Living Symphonies is create a piece of music which portrays in real time the huge web of interactions that make up a forest ecosystem. A site-specific symphony, in effect. The first step is to select a forest which is really diverse in terms of its ecology and we then go out there and survey the huge array of flora and fauna that inhabit that forest. So we go out to the forest in question, pick out a 30 metre by 20 metre area of the forest and painstakingly examine every square metre of that forest uh, segment for the wildlife that lives within it. So we're trying to spatially map out all of the flora and fauna that are likely to appear within that area of the forest. Scientists, when they begin to build models of this kind of system, usually start from what the organisms are. And from the organisms, you then begin to build their, their quantities and their relative quantities and their interactions. What eats what? What has a mutualistic relationship with what? So very rapidly, from a number of organisms and their interactions, you can develop this great complexity. And from that, we hope to begin to understand that the patterns that emerge as functional patterns in the system. The simulation itself came out of the research that I produced as part of my doctoral studies, which was a very simple abstract model of the way in which social organisms interact over a long time scale. This simulation for Living Symphonies is an extension of that which takes it and applies it in a multi-level format to the whole array of organisms which live within this particular forest. What we see here is a visualisation of what's going on beneath the hood of Living Symphonies. This area marks out the real area of Thetford Forest that we've surveyed for its flora and fauna. So in the centre here we have a cluster of hawthorn trees and elms. Around the edge we've got a few pine trees which are portrayed by these circles. Each of the tiny triangles portrays an individual organism. So we've got wrens hopping around the forest floor um, and a moth flying around here which seems to have found some food. And up here we've got a pair of buzzards which are circling on the thermals overhead. After the survey process is complete, um, every single species is allocated a um, musical motif that is composed for it and is heard back wherever the species is. So if it's a tree, it's heard back by the tree. If it's a moving thing, then it's heard back moving based on the simulation of where that thing might be moving and what it might be attracted to. The really key thing is that each organism doesn't just have one set of melodies which describe it. It's got a whole set of sequences each of which correspond to a different activity state. So the squirrel, when it's foraging, will sound very different to the squirrel when it's eating or when it's mating um, or when it's just idly exploring. One of the ones I've been working on recently is buzzard. One of the main activity states for buzzards is uh, when they pair and fly together. So there's interlocking melodies that can work together. So this is the main melody for buzzard. And then you have another option, um, so an alternate buzzard uh, paired with it. So 
So those two things can circle above the canopy together at the same time. Um, and the whole composition is kind of made in that way. Coming into this space has just been magical. You begin to hear some of the sounds, some of the higher canopy sounds from further away. And as you get closer and closer, you begin to hear the lower canopy sounds. And, and we were all sort of pricking up our ears. I'm still trying to work out what the one that goes is. Could be a woodpecker. Could be a woodpecker. Might be a bit literal. One of the biggest uh, misunderstandings, I think, that can be easily made with the work is that um, we're somehow magically tracking every ant and every fly and every butterfly. <laughs> Because we're operating from a model, it's, it's basically our best possible um, guess based upon um, research surveying and uh, knowledge from a lot of people that we've worked with. In science, when we make predictions with our models, we tend to make predictions about perturbations. Here they've done something very different in that they've created this model and then put it back into the space, reflecting in real time what might be happening in there. They're trying to reflect what is now, whereas for most scientists we tend to predict forwards and say what will be as a function of something that will happen. So what could that sound be? Um, From the point of view of uh, the audience and people that come to listen to the piece and experience it, I hope that they will treat it as a platform for exploring forest and uh, the, the ecosystems within it um, and learning more about it through the piece. I, I think that coming into a space like this today, especially with my children, will change their response to how I talk about it. I think that although I talk to them a lot about what organisms are there and how things work, they will be opened by this experience. Certainly as an ecologist, I am gaining so much just by coming in and contemplating this in a different way and having this whole different dimension added to the experience. So yes, I think science gains and people gain and music gains and full credit to the imagination of the people who are doing this. <laughs>